Miami this afternoon. The Marlins will try to, well, stay hot again. The pitch on a, a great run. Winners of eight of nine. Just a game under 500. The Phillies and the Marlins. It's game two of a three-game series. University of Miami night tonight. Big crowd is expected at Marlins Park. For Phillies and Marlins, Marcelo Zuna had the big night last night for the fish. Cole Hamels gets the ball, and Dan Heron will oppose him. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. The Marlins just trying to ride this wave right now and keep the momentum. Terrific win last night for the fish. Absolutely, and, and when you have the momentum going, you just want to continue. You don't want to stop. And it's great to see the way this ball club's been playing, especially the way the season started. One guy who has momentum at the plate, and that's Marcel Ozuna. Yeah, he hasn't homered yet, but so what? I mean, he is driving in big runs, doing everything. All right, I have to keep hitting myself. He's still just 24 years old. His second full season as a major leaguer. He plays a demanding position, center field, in a big ballpark. How about four four-hit games in his career? Three of those have come against the Philadelphia Phillies, and of course the big one, the big double last night for the game winner. Right now, Marcelo Zuna on a three-game hitting streak, and oh, during that three-game streak, all he's done is gone six for ten. Our T-Mobile game changer, a career high for hits, second career walk-off hit. The H's are going here, Heron and Hamels. Now, the Marlins saw Hamels, the Phils saw Heron. This was up in Philly. Yeah, these two guys are veterans. I think Dan Heron certainly is uh, what everybody expected. You see his overall record, nice 338 ERA. In his career, he's 1-6 and six against the Phillies. He's pitched all right. He's just had trouble beating this Philadelphia ball club. The long ball's hurt him. Dan Heron has given up six. Now, on the other side... Cole Hamels, he's had trouble beating the Marlins over his long career. 35 career starts against the Marlins. He's 9-14. and 14. And, oh, by the way, Hamels this year has allowed seven home runs. Oh, there you go. So it's Hamels, it's Heron, it's Miami, and Philly. Big house expected. And D. Gordon, when he leads it off, the leading hitter in Major League Baseball. Man, is he hot in a flash.
has he been ready throughout the season? For more on Gordon, let's go out to center field. Craig Minervini, Jeff Conan. Yeah, I think you could say that, Jeff and, uh, and Rich. Uh, good afternoon again, everybody. D. Gordon's been amazing getting on base and, and exactly what you saw last year as a Dodger in that series where he was unbelievable. And he has just kept it up here through a full month of the season. Now. Yeah, everything this guy's done has been outstandingly positive for the for the Miami Marlins. You can see the, the weapons that he possesses. He can bunt the ball. Uh, he actually has a little bit not power, but he can hit the ball hard uh, on the pole side. He's uh, stealing bases. He's been an absolute spark plug for this offense. And defensively, he's been outstanding as well. He's just been doing everything he could possibly do. We mentioned it no matter which way you wanted the ball. If you want to go in the outfield or infield hit. Uh, hit it hard too. He hit some line drive shots. Yeah, he's leading Major League Baseball and hits an average. He just had a club record with a 409 average in April. Five straight multi hit games, six three hit games on the season, which leads Major League Baseball. He's just been a joy to be around as well. Obliterated Mike Lowe's record of April of a 385 average, though Lowell did have a few more hits. He played a few more games in that April month yesteryear than D. Gordon did. But so far, so good for the table setter for the Marlins. Was also driven in. Very impressive 11 runs so far this year. Game two of the series. Hamels Heron coming up next. Toyota, let's go places by Auto Nation. Save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit AutoNation.com. Gorgeous afternoon in Miami and a big crowd expected. University of Miami night here on a Saturday. A four o'clock starts here in Miami. Lineups for the Phillies. Jam Lexus brings it to you. Ben Revere, Odubel Herrera. Chase Utley, he's up to 171 career games against the Fish. He hit his 30th home run in last night's ball game. Ryan Howard, Grady Sizemore, Cody Ashey's at third. Carlos Ruiz in the seventh spot. Freddie Galvis, a hot start this year, is at short. And Cole Hamels will hit ninth. And there is Dan Heron making start number five on the season. Well, I tell you what, I tell you something interesting that you may not know, but Dan Heron and Cole Hamels each have been All Stars three times. Dan Heron in 07, 08, and 09, coming off a good start. Maybe his last start, he didn't have the stuff that he normally does, but he picked up the win against the Washington Nationals in that 6 2 Marlins victory. Heron started that 2007 All Star game as an Oakland Athletic, and he misses outside to Ben Revere, and the game is underway. Pinch Penny brings you that first pitch. Well, Dubal Herrera and Chase Utley to follow. 
loud strike one call from Manny Gonzalez who works the plate. Paul Schreiber's at first Clint Fagan is the umpire out at second Brian Honora is at third base. Line smash welcome to the lineup Jeff Baker his first start and he gets the first out that one hit right at him. All you have to do is just react on this shot. Hope you're in the right position. Jeff Baker was and he picks it for the first out. Baker last night a, a pinch hit. And Herring goes after Odubel Herrera who was 0 for 3. Against the veteran right hander up in Philly. There's a strike. You see Herrera we mentioned it last night is having a, a really nice start to his career rule five draft pick. Out of the Texas Rangers organization. And he leads in a lot of rookie categories hits doubles triples. Total bases stolen bases. And he's getting a crash course. In playing center field which he would not done a lot of before this year. Boy there's that hesitation. That slow breaking ball. That was a perfect strike. And Herrera. Might beg to differ but. Certainly had plenty of the plate. One two coming. You see a lot of orange out there. With a smattering of green. Got the red orange Marlin jerseys and of course the University of Miami look. That one wide of Baker. And just inside first base coach. Juan Samuel. Michael Morse getting the day off. Doing some uh, handy work on his bat. One two. That's the one thing that uh, Herrera has shown. In a few times we've had a chance to see him. Is that he battles you up there. He fouls off a lot of pitches. He makes a pitcher work. Aaron misses down low. There are very little expectations around this Phillies team. Right now they've dropped four in a row. They are eight and 16. So giving a guy like Herrera a shot to play on a daily basis, see what he's got. It isn't such a gamble. Heron just misses. It was out. 83 miles an hour on Fox tracks. And look at that eight pitches Herrera has seen so far. Herrera's been on base in 16 consecutive games. In the Arizona back and now in and a running catch waist high. All right, let's check in on that defense this afternoon. Brought to you by BMW. There's Ichiro Ozuna. You saw him come in on that fly ball. John Carlo in right. Prado, Echeverria, D. Gordon, Jeff Baker with the start at first. Real Muto behind the plate. That defense has committed only six errors all year. The best in the biz, as they say. Oh! Now Utley who takes a strike. Utley came into last night's game hitting just 114. He was one for four. But as you've seen that one was a three run homer. And Ed's who would expect for a guy like Heron who's been in the game so long. 
There are a lot of guys that have a lot of at bats against him. Utley has 24. Has homered twice, has six hits. See the crowd filling in on University of Miami day or night. Whichever you choose. Four o'clock start is right in the middle. I choose day. Yeah, I know, but then you know, halfway through the game, you'll look outside and it'll be night. On a hop, Gordon sets himself and gets the out. Dan Heron goes one, two, three in the first. Miami gets their first look at Cole Hamels. Sebastian is here, the Ibis Brand Eye Vision Cam. I don't know if you want that in high def, but you get it. <laughs> there you go. Jan Lexus brings you Miami's lineup. Leading hitter in baseball, D. Gordon at top. Martin Prado in the two spot. John Carlos Stanton continues to swing a hot bat. Marcel Ozuna, four for four last night with three doubles and good numbers against Hamels. Jeff Baker gets a start. JT Real Muto, Ichiro, Danny Echeverria, and Dan Heron hits ninth. And this is Hamels to Gordon. And that's a strike. Oh. Season so far for Hamels. Start number six. Marlon saw him and he pitched well against him. About two weeks ago, and My D goodness. Gordon laces one in the center field. That's his first career hit against Hamels in 10 at bats. It shows you how hot he's going. He is 18 for his last 29. The superlatives are, are absolutely fantastic. And D. Gordon now has hit in 22 of 25 games. So there have only been three games where he has not hit. He's on a little league streak right now. 18 for 29. Unbelievable. Amazing. Prado now, and then Stanton. And of course, Gordon a threat to run. Hamill's pretty good at holding runners. Oh! Prado gets a strike. Marlins had just five hits and scored an unearned run against Hamill's. That was in the six innings of work. Hamill's dropped a throw on a difficult play at first. To allow a run to score. But Hamels can be really, really dangerous too. His last start against a hot St. Louis team gave up just a run in seven innings and punched out nine. He's had an interesting run in this ballpark too. Gordon from first. He's running, got a good jump. And Ruiz's throw, not a chance. There are times, and that wasn't a hit and run, but there are times that Martin Prado might swing at a pitch that way, but he saw 
the tremendous jump that D Gordon was able to get and just said hey I'm going to let you get to second now I'll get you over to third. Well here's Prado now with a 2 1 pitch coming. And D Gordon is closing on Billy Hamilton. Prado hits it hard. Ashy straightens up. Gordon is going across the diamond and the ball is bottled and Prado is safe. You love this part, Rich, because you love tennis. There's a forced error right there. The reason being, Ashy saw out of the corner of his eye D. Gordon. He said, you know what? He's thinking about coming over here when I throw this ball. I better make a perfect throw. He hesitated, made a poor throw. Howard bobbled, and here comes D. Gordon over to third. There it is right there. Great instincts by D. And so the Marlins get Stanton to the plate with nobody out and runners at the corners. It's an E5. Stan is hit in six straight. Hamels with a breaking ball swung on and missed and we talked about the differences in these two ball clubs defensively for the Phillies that's their 21st error. Fouled at the plate. It's a foul ball, even though Prado went down to second and Ruiz threw the ball down to second. And now Hamill's in a position where he's looking for a strikeout and Stanton's looking for contact. Talking about the numbers for Hamill's here at Marlins Park. He's made nine starts at Marlins Park. He has an ERA of 2.55, yet he's two and four. So the, the Marlins, when they stay close to Hamill's, Usually find a way, if not to give him a no decision, to tag a loss on him. He has that devastating changeup. See if he uses it here. Fastball up, and it's one and two. Stand one for four last night, a laser beam double. That cast had it 120 miles an hour off the bat, the fastest recorded this year of any hitter. Check swing, I think he went. Woo! Stanton somehow was able to hold up. Here's a look. Sometimes the strength pays off. See the homestand numbers. For the Marlins as a team, it's been a terrific homestand. 2 2. And again, Stanton holds up. Hamels buries the breaking ball. Count is fold out, 3 and 2. Frank Medichino has done such great work with Stanton. A lot of it done in that cage, indoors, on a machine. Just to keep him honest over there, D. Gordon dancing down the line, the third baseline, when Hamels threw over to first. The 3 2. Little chopper, here comes Gordon. Hamels has it, flip, and a play at the play out is Gordon. Hamels with the flip, Ruiz with the tag. Prado stops at second. The Marlins are looking at this play. 
because and we will too. Because of his speed, D. Gordon was going on contact usually with nobody out. You wouldn't have the runner at third go on contact. Well, here's, and there's a question to be had here. Was Ruiz blocking the plate? He has the ball at that point. But he was planted in front of the plate before he had the ball. And here comes Mike Redmond. Here's the overhead look. Now instincts say it's a baseball play, but in this new world, and in this new world, we heard the term, uh, did he have a lane so often last year? And the Marlins are going to challenge this. Now, you can challenge both the collision rule and safe or out, but it does cost a challenge this year. I don't know that the Marlins are challenging safe or out because it, it looked pretty clear that the ball and the tank got to Gordon. I don't know that Gordon even ever got to the plate. I think in question here was Ruiz in front of the plate before he got the throw. Which he is. And really if you you look at that play the completion of it D Gordon doesn't touch the plate either. Here now watch where Ruiz is right there. And I got to be honest I got no feel for which way this is going to go. My feel is that the call will stand. He's out. And we'll see if it stands or if it's confirmed. If it stands, there's no clear evidence. The Marlins have lost their challenge. And they do it early here. Chrysler bringing you the Marlins challenge. Call stands, so not enough evidence to overturn. Now, here, here's a, another part of that story. With the way Ruiz was positioned, if you have a, a heftier runner, and he comes in at, at Carlos Ruiz and really nails him. Then what? Oh, it, he's fair game. Because he was blocking the plate. He had the ball. Yeah, he's fair game at that point. You can run him. Here's Ozuna. And Ozuna takes in. It's a big out to get for the Phils, certainly. And a nice play by Hamels. Ruiz out for a, a chat. Marcelo Ozuna has been really fun to watch this year. There was a time where Ozuna's bat was quiet. The adjustments that he made, all the long work that he put in, and it's all paying off right now in the last week. Seven doubles on the year. Four of those have come in his last ten at bats. Prado at second, Stanton at first. That's in, it's two and oh. Well, certainly this battery of Carlos Ruiz and Cole Hamels. They know each other. They've worked together many times. <laughs> Catches the outside corner. Ozuna has found the right field line a couple of times in the last two ball games for doubles. Hamels goes three and one on him. That a fastball. This is where Hamels can get tough because he he has such a good arsenal he doesn't have to give in and throw the fastball. Little roller up the line. Ozuna hustling and he's got the base hit. And the bags are loaded for Jeff Baker. Yet another infield base hit, and the Marlins continue to lead the league. 34 infield base hits. Pretty good effort by Ashy, but he really didn't have a chance. That's why Howard came off the bag, and it sets the stage for Jeff Baker.
Baker one for one last night. This is his first at bat of the year. That is not a pinch hit appearance. A Marlin at every base one out Hamels. In with a fastball. One of the things you and I have talked about Rich during this uh, homestand during this uh, eight of nine uh, stretch also. Is that it's been somebody different. Just about every night. Had a good rip and fouls it back. It's one and one. Baker in his career exceptionally good against lefties. Little history between Jeff Baker and Cole Hamels. Hamels same pitch 93 mile an hour fastball. That's how he opened the at bat against Baker. That's one and two. Swing and a miss, breaking ball. So Hamill's trying to work his way out of this jam. Has two outs. Here's Real Muto. Tough part about Hamill's if he wiggles his way out of a jam, sometimes he can put it back together, and you like to get him when you can. So it's going to take a big two out base hit to do that here. One and one. Ramuto two for three against Hamels in his short career. Oh. Looks like Hamels is in the process of putting it back together right now. Yeah, he made some good pitches to get Baker. And he's made some good pitches, a couple good fastballs to get ahead to Real Muto here. And he got a breaking ball. Hamels wriggles off the hook. Miami leaves him loaded. And headed to the second. Marlins and Phillies scoreless.
This was Ryan Howard and Dan Heron's meeting up in Philly. Howard going deep, a pair of two run homers. Freddie Galvis and Howard. The Phillies beat Heron 7 to 3. And here is Howard. Grady Sizemore and Cody Ashey right behind him. First pitch swing, a little tapper. That would be Martin Prado over there, and he flips on over to first. So one out on one pitch. And here comes Sizemore. Marlon Homestand, of course, started with the sweep of the Nationals, two of three from the Mets, and a win last night. So right now, a six and one homestand. Which makes the next 24 hours rather uh, interesting for the fish. With two games against the Phillies. One o'clock game tomorrow. Well, and tomorrow the Marlins will face a, a youngster making his second major league start. Severino Gonzalez. Oh! Not Paul Severino of MLB Network, but Severino Gonzalez. There he is. Nor Paul Sorvino, the <laughs> fine actor. Out of Panama. And of course, the greatest uh, pitcher from Panama. Some reliever pitched, I think, for a few years with the Yankees. Mr. Rivera. You know, there's a there's a guy when we see Grady Sizemore, there's a, a name that keeps coming up because over the last few years we saw Dominic Brown with the Phillies. Who has been on rehab assignment. Each a row. But right now the Phillies aren't happy with the way Brown's swinging the bat. We've seen Ichiro a couple of times. He's starting to get real familiar with that area down there. Just ran out of room. And from what I was told today, Charlie Manuel is in the minor leagues now, working with Dominic Brown to try to get him back on track. Charlie Manuel is a very good hitting coach. That's how he climbed up in the Indians organization. That was his reputation before he became a big league manager. Full we'll count now on Sizemore. It's an organization that is hopeful that their young players can blossom. Most of their talent is in double A and in their double A rotation right now. Pat Gillick is back as the president. Ruben Amaro Jr., the general manager. That would foul back to the screen. Count full at three and two. And they've got Grady Sizemore and Jeff Francoeur on this team. We saw Francoeur blast one off the wall up in Philly in that series. Sizemore swings and misses. Heron gets a strikeout. Good job. Good pitch by Dan Heron. A Sunday fun day tomorrow, and that's when we will see Severino Gonzalez. Jared Kozar starts at 110. Pepsi 4 for 74 pack is up. Four tickets. 4 KMB Franks for Pepsi, 74 bucks. A Bob the Shark plush doll for the kids. And it's courtesy of Avianca Airlines. And of course, you can run the bases after the game in the Diamond Dash. Bob the Shark, probably the most popular of the racing sea creatures. To so bring Bob the Shark up to D.C., jump in in that uh, president's race. That's nasty stuff up in D.C. Those presidents are not real friendly. Oh! Cody Ashey with the count one and two. For the most part, the young players on this Phillies team have had good starts. Ashey, 299 average. Freddie Galvis has been over 300 the whole year. And of course, we talked about Odubel Herrera. Oh, wow. 
Dan Heron. That's called carving up a young hitter. Snaps one off. He just got carved up. Still scoreless in Miami. University of Miami afternoon at the ballpark and a very nice crowd here at Marlins Park. Ichiro leads it off for Miami. I guess Hamels who zips in a fastball at 92. Ichiro, Adani Echeverria, and Dan Heron. Ichiro a base hit in last night's ball game. He hasn't seen Hamels a lot. He's one for five against him. Well, Ichiro now has played in every game. He's started 13 games in left field and had a couple of starts in center field. Adding a little uh, audio emphasis as he dodged out of the way. And he slices that one down the left field line for a base hit. That is vintage Ichiro. You know what even makes that more. Uh, Satisfying to Ichiro and just in watching was the pitch before. Pitch up and in. And I don't know if it was intentional, but up and in, and then Hamels comes back and Ichiro just slices it down that left field line. Vintage. Now Echeverria. One for four last night, Echeverria. Still the reigning National League player of the week. Ichiro's running on the first pitch. Echeverria pokes into right field. It's going to fall. Ichiro has already touched second, and he's on his way to third. Now the Phillies may appeal it because Ichiro came off of second and ended up on the first base side of it. But I think since he already touched, he didn't have to retouch. This will be an interesting replay. The Phillies are all pointing out towards second base. Here's a look. Well, a hit and run on. Maybe. He may have been in a straight steal. Will be an interesting call.
the Phillies are, I think, either asking for time or they want Utley to go out to the mound right now and tell Hamels they're going to appeal second, I believe. Heron is at the plate, and let's see. He clearly touched it, but then he took a step towards first. Whether he has to retouch or not, we'll find out. He's out. And so Mike Redman is going to come out, and he's going to get clarification. Ichiro's not real happy at third base either. Now Miami does not have a challenge here. I don't think I've ever seen that particular play. You see the play where a runner rounds second base touches it and then has to go back to the previous base. When he goes back to the previous base he has to retouch the bag. Evidently according to Clint Fagan the second base umpire. Even if you go to the next base, you also have to touch it according to what they've just called. This is a reviewable play, but the Marlins don't have a challenge. The ump and the umpire is trying to explain right now to Mike Redman. That's Clint Fagan out there at second base. And so Ichiro is going to be out. Boy, that's too bad because that was a, a great uh, little blue base hit by Echeverria with Ichiro on the move and would have set up a great situation. Well, Miami, their first eight hitters, has four hits, reached on an error, and they've got nothing to show for it right now. Except one out and Heron at the plate. And it looks like he's going to try to bunt Echeverria down to second. Ichiro had a great jump. And Echeverria executed by keeping it alive and putting it in right field. Well, early on, we've seen two really good jumps D. Gordon and Ichiro. Nice bunt by Heron, and he's tagged out. So if Miami's going to get anything out of this inning, it's the hottest hitter in baseball that'll have to do it. Against a really tough lefty, and that's D. Gordon. Dan Heron has done a really nice job this year when he's been called on to try to drop down a sacrifice spot. Second time this year, but he really, really has a good idea when he drops down a bunt. Looks like he knows what he's doing. Gordon takes a big swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. Gordon laced a fastball up the middle for a single. 42nd hit of the season. He had 41 hits in the first 23 games for Miami. He's the 18th player since 1914 to do that. The last guy to do that, 41 hits. In 23 games to start a season. Alfonso Soriano in 2003. Wow. In the dirt. And Ruiz picks it up. So evidently what we've learned today is that the rule applies the same way if the runner's going back to the bag. If the bag is touched, you have to retouch it. Yeah, Ichiro's first step once he hit second was back towards first. Three and one to Gordon. You got Prado on deck. Hamels has thrown a bunch of pitches here. Thirty six. Nice at bat there by Gordon. That pitch up and in, and he walks. That's an area 
where Hamels has struggled this year. That's his 17th walk. 17 walks in a little over 32 innings. Normally better control than that. As an example, last year, 204 plus innings, 59 walks for Cole Hamels. Well, you got speed out there. Echeverry at second, Gordon at first. And Hamels misses low to Prado. Prado hit the ground ball that Cody Ashey fielded and then short hopped Howard on. Marlins had runners at the corners and nobody out with Stanton up. Hamels made a nice play on a little tapper. Went home and got Gordon. And then promptly pitched out of the inning. See what he gets 2 0. Hey, just miss with a changeup. See if he gives him that 2 0 fastball. With that fresh pine tar on the bat. Tough to pick that up on the black jerseys, right? Usually has the stripe on the right and the left shoulder from that. He's gone three and one. His ball strike ratio is very unhamels like. 41 pitches, 19 balls, and 22 strikes. And that's the frustrating part to this point. The Marlins haven't been able to take. Advantage of that. Prado to left. That's deep. That's gone. Three run shot. Martin Prado. And Miami takes advantage of that. Like I said, up until this point, the Marlins hadn't been able to take advantage of it. Advantage Martin Prado. Boy, he blasted it. That is a no doubter. Boy, it's picking up your teammates, too. I'll tell you, Ichiro feels good about this, too. Now Stanton against Hamels. A little cut fastball for a strike. Second homer for Prado. He's driven in 13 now. You know, it's amazing. We talk about guys who have faced each other a lot. That was his 66th at bat in his career against Hamels. And his second career home run. Against Cole Hamels. 0 and 2 is Stanton. And the changeup got him. But Martin Prado comes through. Marlins looking for a big hit. They found it. A three run shot by Prado.
knocking one up into the blue seats in left. And by the way, the eighth home run that Hamels is allowed this year. And so Dan Heron goes to work in the third, having retired all six that he's faced. And a changeup taken for a strike. And quickly another strike. Interesting lineup for the Phillies. Ruiz, the only right handed hitter in the lineup, and right handers have really struggled against Dan Heron this year. So, because of that, Brian Sandberg loads up with lefties. 0 2. Got him. Dan Heron strikes out Carlos Ruiz. We just saw that unique play at second with Ichiro being called out. Craig Minervini has more on that one. Craig? Yeah, Rich, Steve Ripley here, the umpiring supervisor, former longtime Major League Baseball umpire. And I just asked him about that play with Ichiro, and he said, you know, Ichiro started to go back to first base. And the way he put it is, imagine if Ichiro went halfway to first base, he can't run across the diamond. So as soon as he makes that little move back toward first base, that's when he has to retouch. Had his foot stayed on the base, then he could have pivoted, and they would allow him to go to third, and that's it in that instance. Thank you, Craig. Good umpire and a good resource. Steve Ripley is the best. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great visual. If he, if he had gone halfway back and then cut across the diamond. We need to give Steve a headset and, and make him the Mike Pereira of Major League Baseball. Yeah, he's always very helpful to us. Freddie Galvis, 0 for 3 last night, his first AB, and Heron misses in. The middle Echeverria got it spins throws safe oh would have been spectacular the first part of that play was Heron trying to catch it behind his back that didn't work Galvis runs well yeah if not for the speed of Freddie Galvis uh, he'd have been watching this one all night somewhere good pick too by Jeff Baker over there but Galvis just beats it out what a great effort by Echeverria, though. Here's Hamels. And he pops up a bunt. It's out of play. Boy, that's been a. I feel like saying that's been the one constant, Ray. <laughs> it's baseball. It's been the defense. The defense has been incredible. If you need James Earl Jones, <laughs> I need his voice. To give you that. <laughs> It is, and it's a it's a nice departure from the last couple of years. Hamel swinging away, pops it up. Echeverria eyes it and makes the catch. Marlins did not have a good defense on the infield last year. Didn't have a lot of range at third. There were so many guys that played second base. First base was also a, an issue. Gordon. Has had a real nice start to the year defensively, showing not only exceptional range, but also good ability around the bag. Michael Morse has done a nice job defensively at first base. Here's Ben Revere lined out back in the first. Revere against Heron in his career has been quite good. Those two meeting in the American League when Revere was with the Twins. He's eight for 21, and that includes a line drive out back in the first. We've talked about some of the Phillies who have not hit well here at Marlins Park. Revere, not one of them. 
He's hit pretty well in this ballpark. Into right field, the base hit, and Revere continues his success against Heron. Second hit of the inning. Odubel Herrera is up. There are outliers and anomalies throughout when it's early in the season. It's the second month now. May begins. Odubel Herrera is one of the best in the National League with runners in scoring position. Breaking ball is a strike. And the reason that has really been a standout for the Phillies because in the entire month of April, the Phillies as a team hit 180 with runners in scoring position. That one pops out of the glove of JT Real Muto. Not sure what happened. Maybe a mix up. Phillies, both of their runners move up. Yeah, JT expecting something else, and all of a sudden that fastball took off on him. That often happens the first time you get a runner at second base. The catchers and pitchers will set their sequence of signs. And apparently, one side was not in line with the other. There's a liner and it finds Baker. And Heron works his way out of the inning. Phillies strand two, three nothing, Miami. Miami a 3 nothing lead bottom three University of Miami afternoon here at the ballpark it's copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins Marcelo Zuna line to the center and Herrera is there he makes the catch Ozuna hit it on the button he had an infield hit, a little dribbler up the line. So that's the, I guess, the baseball god's way of evening things out. Hit a missile to center for an out and a 50 foot ground ball for a hit. And here's Jeff Baker. So they say. <laughs> that's right. You hitters, they, they never even out, do they? Hamels has shown flashes of his old self, his all star self. Showed it in the first when he struck out Baker and Rio Muto to get out of that inning. Baker rips it down the line and into the corner it goes. 
And Jeff Baker's got himself a double. Tell you what, all the work that the Marlin hitting coaches, Frank Menachino, Lenny Harris, have done with the reserves, whether it's Jeff Baker or Justin Bohr, Reed Brignac, it really is showing up. Here is Baker, his first start of the season. This is game number 24. And he doubles down the left field line. He came into the game with just six at bats, one for six. So, to, to his credit, to the coaching staff's credit, and to Bates' credit, just putting in a lot of time, a lot of work. Real Muto swings and misses. The routine that these two guys put those hitters through. A lot of machines, a lot of sliders and curveballs off the machines in the cage. Because as Frank Manichino said, you can't really stay sharp in batting practice because you're just hitting fastballs. That one's fair. And down the line, Baker will score. Real Muto is thinking three, and he'll hold it second with an RBI double, and it's 4 nothing Miami. It's a thing of beauty. Back to back doubles. Two really solid swings. Look at how JT stays down on that ball. The front side right on it. His head is on it. And the line drive hits sharply into that left field corner. Baker scores easily. Now here is Ichiro. Ichiro singled in the second. Outfield towards left center. And Hamels misses away. 1 0. Some hard hit balls in this inning. Starting with the Ozuna liner to center. Ichiro, the 41 year old. What about the you, baby? The best. And that fastball is in. It's two and one. Tommy documented Miami's success against Hamels. Largely, it has come late in ball games, sometimes when he's out of the game. But in this one, four runs early against the Phillies lefty. Significant. It's out, and Ichiro walks. And here comes Andrew Maria, Bob McClure. Philly's pitching coach is on his way out to the mound. Yeah, I think he's going out there. He just sees a, an inconsistent Cole Hamels. Tommy, I got a great idea for you. The next time you have a group outing, okay, bring them to the Clevelander, and you'll get a happy hour pricing for all weekday home games, just twenty dollars a person. And the Clevelander on Sundays, Tommy, has got brunch, five dollar mimosas. Are you in? I'm in. She's in. Everyone's in. And Bloody Marys, 1877 Marlins, or go to Marlins.com slash groups. So tomorrow for our pregame prep, may I suggest a $5 mimosa? I'm in. <laughs> the Marlins are in too today. They've had 10 base runners already with just one out here in the third inning. Well, Echeverria was part of Ichiro's wild adventure back in that second inning. Ichiro was running. As you pointed out, he didn't peak, so it was a straight steal. Yeah, I think in that case, Echeverria just saw a pitch out over the plate, saw that big opening on the right side, and just figured he'd take a shot. But as we saw Ichiro, he didn't turn to try to pick up the ball until he got close to second base. If you missed it, Ichiro got to second. The ball was in right. Took a step towards first. 
Saw that it landed and then headed to third without retouching second on his way to third. And Ash, this time with a little more fervor, goes to the right side. A ball and a strike. Ramuto at second. Each rose at first. Echevarria swings and misses. It's funny just looking at the two base runners. The Marlins are on a, a real nice ride. Winners of eight of nine and three in a row. JT Riamuto and Ichiro have been right in the middle of it. Coming out of spring training, you would not have thought that. I remember early in spring training, Real Muto wasn't around a lot. They wanted him to go down and just start getting his reps and, and playing and, and getting ready. And of course, uh, Ichiro, the, the plan there was to. We saw a lot of Ichiro in the spring. He played a lot. He had a great spring. But the plan was to have him as the fourth outfielder. Echeverria, right center field. Caught there by Sizemore, tagging his real Muto. Ichiro returns to first. They're at the corners. There's two outs, and it's Dan Heron coming up. That's what happens when you've got an infielder playing center field for the first time. He's trying to learn that. Position in the big leagues. And of course, Grady Sizemore, former center fielder. Now, Heron can handle the bat. He's a guy that in his career has been more than capable of helping himself. A career 206 average, a couple of homers, 375 at bats. He went to college as a hitter, he said. At Pepperdine before they tried him on the mound and he ended up being drafted by the Cardinals. Well, and Hamels knows that. That's why he started him with a good changeup. Heron drives it, right center. Herrera is there and he makes the catch. But Dan Heron squared it up. Another run and a 4 0 lead. Four nothing Miami on top of the Phillies University of Miami afternoon. And a big crowd here. Roof is closed. AC is on. And tomorrow, the Marlins and the Phillies end the series. Jared Cozart 
Severino Gonzalez. 12 30 for Marlins Live. Yes, you'll probably see Ryan Howard in there. Marlins hopeful that Jared Cozart continues to pitch uh, well. The Marlins starting pitching in this run. I know the the Ozuna doubles and the Stanton homers and the Prado homers, all of that is fun and necessary and a great sign. But the Marlins starters in this run with an ERA of just under two. And that's over nine games. Here's Utley. Miami certainly has come a long way in a short time. After a real slow start, they were three and eleven. Well, a, a chance today with a win this afternoon to even their record at 500. The Marlins tied with Atlanta at 11 and 12, four and a half behind the Mets, who are 16 and eight, who won on Harvey Day yesterday. Heron misses out. Nationals and Mets. It's a Gio Gonzalez Jonathan Nice matchup tonight in New York. Atlanta home against Cincinnati. The Reds are 11 and 12 as are the Braves. These two teams played close games last year. Phillies coming out just a little bit on top, winning 10 of the 19 games. 10 of the games were decided by one run or less. Each row towards the line. An out here in the fourth. A fine time for a clean, crisp Coors Light. Cold, hard fact. Last 10 games in this ballpark. Miami's won 7 of 10. Outscored Philly. Outpitched Philly. We were talking about Sandberg the other night. MVP in 1984. Right Sandberg had 200 hits that year. Of course hit over 300. Had 36 doubles. 19 triples. And 19 home runs. Run! And think about it, Wrigley isn't really a triples ballpark. No, it's not. Really, you get your triples at Wrigley and you played there enough down the lines, right? Mm -hmm. Left field, right field, uh, corner. Uh, Howard with a, a feeble swing at that was fooled certainly by Dan Heron. Well, Dan Heron with his fourth strikeout now has not walked anybody. There's that change up tumbling downward out of the zone. Here's Sizemore. And Heron misses up. How much longer will Cole Hamels be a Philly? You wonder. And it, the wondering actually started well before this season. It's possible that the Phillies are waiting for a team that has some injuries in the rotation. You would think the Dodgers may at one point. Raise the ante. Red Sox could.
Obviously Ruben Amaro. Phillies GMs. Sitting back. Trying to get the best deal for his ball club. Seemingly the other chip that he's got is Jonathan Papelbon. His closer. It's not easy to reboot or start over. And you and I watched the 2013 Marlins after the Marlins pushed the restart button at the end of 2012. And that club took its lumps, but the young players also got experience. Stanton, Ozuna, Yelich got their first taste of the big leagues at Chavaria. I think that's a great, a great point because sometimes teams are afraid. We don't want to give that young guy. We don't want to expose him. We don't want him to fail. Those young guys learned and got better. Sizemore gets into that one right center field. Ozuna won't get it until it's on a hop. Brady Sizemore hustles into second, and he's in there with a double. And I say that knowing that. Organizations know their 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 people, and if you have maybe a young player who you think could be fragile and that could affect him, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea. But the Marlins knew their talent, their their young men, and got him out there, uh, dropped him in the big leagues, and said, "Here you go." And remember, Ozuna actually got here because Stanton was hurt. Ozuna had just started his first year in Double A. Played a handful of games in Double A. Like eight or ten <laughs> games, and Miami called him up, and he held his own. I think he was the biggest surprise of 2013. I know he hurt his wrist in that dive in Colorado, and he was slumping at the time. Ashy fouls it back to the screen. That's a Varia. He was one not only coming up, but you're talking about putting guys in key positions. And now you have Etch at shortstop playing that position the way he does and improving as we've seen as a hitter. Count one and two. And you know, it's a different feel for a guy like JT Rio Muto. Because he joins a moving train right now with veteran players and good young players. So it's a different dynamic for a guy like Rio Muto than it was, say, in, in 2013. He joins a team that is expected to contend. Counts one and two. Ashley called out on strikes in the second. Four strikeouts, no walks for Dan Heron. Heron has had to throw a lot of pitches to get to two outs in the fourth. This is his 71st. Balls, two strikes. A Martin Prado three run homer against Cole Hamels got the scoring started in the second. JT Real Muto following up a Jeff Baker double with one of his own. And that's how Miami has a 4 0 lead and lots of Dan Heron in between. In the air. Riamuto, the former shortstop in high school, makes the catch. Phillies leave a runner in scoring position. D. Gordon, don't want to miss that, is coming up.
man is coming in our Geico Marlins moment speaking of speed Chuck Carr's career high five hits in 94 gave the Marlins a record for hits in a game also swiped a couple bags scored three runs the Marlins beat the Atlanta Braves back in 1994 on this day D Gordon oh! single swiped the bag scored a run walked. Chuck Carr, three years, a uh, Marlin that inaugural season, 58 stolen bases. Oh! Gordon in this series, now four for five. Cardinals and Pirates are 1-1. One, one. In the 11th, the Cardinals are off to a great start. They're at 16 and 6. Oh man, D. Gordon just hits and hits and hits. Big healthy turn at first, scampers back in. What a start to his Marlins career for D. Gordon. That is now six consecutive multi hit games. And if you look at what he's done, we talked about it last night in this ballpark. D. Gordon playing in his 17th game. He played some games last year as a Dodger. He has 37 hits and 76 at bats. He's in over 500 in this ballpark. He's 19 for his last 30. That's not 19 hits in his last 30 games. That's 19 hits in his last 30 at bats. That's that's unbelievable. Now he's at 434. That's uh, it's quite a start. And he's got his eyes on second base right now. Stole his tenth base of the season back in the first. Well, the two runners we saw take off, D. Gordon, when he stole Ichiro running in the second inning. Both got really good jumps against Hamels. Hamels figures he'll go over there again. Prado blasted one up into the blue seats above the Phillies bullpen down the left field line. Hamels figures he'll go over there again. It, it's an interesting look right now for Gordon, who's not getting a huge lead, increases it a bit here, but you really don't have to against the lefty. He's running on the pitch, taken up. Luis's throw, not even close. Stolen bases, two hits, and it's only the fourth inning. He has picked up the read and the tell of Cole Hamels because he has gotten unbelievable jumps twice and two stolen bases today. We've seen him go feet first most of the year. Every now and then he'll bust out a head first slide. He's got a nice lead right now. Oh. Brown takes a 2 0 pitch for a strike. An opportunity for Miami to add on here. In the dirt, kicks away. Gordon will get to third easily. You know, if you're a veteran hitter in Prado, Hamels does have a great breaking ball, but. You wonder if Gordon being at third base eliminates that from his selection on three and one here. Well, we re remember what Prado did the last time he got in a fastball count and got the fastball. Phillies infield is in. Now he threw the breaking ball. Guess when you have Carlos Ruiz back there, you've got the confidence to throw just about anything. Now it's Stanton. And this is exactly what Stan had back in the first inning. 
at the corners with nobody out. He hit a little dribbler out in front of the mound. Gordon tried to score and Hamels was able to get the ball to Ruiz and get Gordon at the plate. Now Stanton. Stanton would like to add on to his National League RBI lead. Came into the game with 22. Forty seven at bats in his career against Hamels got three home runs. Four nothing Miami. Outfield deep and playing Stanton to pull. Way off the line and right is Sizemore. One and two. Stanton drives it. Center field. And it'll stay in the yard. Herrera's there, makes the catch. Everybody tags. Gordon scores. Prado returns to first. And Giancarlo. Delivers RBI number 23 in Miami. Stretches their lead to 5 0. Well, Hamels came back with another fastball. Cut it a little bit. Got on the hands just a little for Giancarlo, but he's strong enough, deep enough to pick up the RBI with the sack fly. And here is Ozuna, who is smoking hot himself. So it is seven for his last 12. Ground ball short. Galvis out there. Utley's turn is just in time to get the double play. Marlins will have to settle for a run into the fifth. This game spills. 5 0 Miami. Checkers authentic Philly cheesesteak. Try the new meatball sub. Pick yours, two for five bucks. And by touch of gray for that perfect salt and pepper look. Five runs, eight hits for Miami. That against Cole Hamels. Dan Heron has limited the Phillies to just three hits and no runs. Gordon has been spectacular again. It's two for two with a walk. 
scored two runs. Stolen two bases. Carlos Ruiz, Freddy Galvis, and then the nine spot. We were talking earlier about Dan Heron, his uh, junior year at Pepperdine. He did a little bit of both. He was 11 and 3 on the mound, and as a hitter, he hit 308, hit five home runs and 47 RBIs. We think that this ballpark has such a, a beautiful view and it does of the Miami skyline especially at night when it's all lit up to see through the rolling windows. Gordon's going out Ozuna's coming in and Gordon is going to make a nice slide. Oh, just, do it. AD, just do it all. Just do it all. <laughs> Ozuna of course. Uh, Coming in, he just sat and watched. Well, and D. Gordon knew where Ozuna was playing and that he probably wasn't going to have a chance to get there, and it was all his. Now, Galvis had an infield hit. Pushes it foul. The ballpark where Heron pitched in college doesn't have the skyline like this one has. It only has the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Ball and a strike. The Pepperdine waves. One and two on Galvis. 12:30 tomorrow. Marlins live right here on Fox Sports Florida. Marlins and Phillies finish off the three-game series. Finish off the homestand. Marlins are hoping that that game could put them over the 500 mark. They have to win this game to get to the 500 mark. Something that seemed a long, long ways away 10 days ago. Severino Gonzalez, second major league start. Jerry Cozart for Miami. You know, then it's up to Washington, D.C. They've come alive. They've been playing well, and it'll be Jordan Zimmerman, Steven Strasburg, and Max Scherzer. Phelps, Latos, and Kohler in those matchups. Matt Latos had a bullpen session today. We didn't get the final report on it, just that he did throw, which is a good sign with the strained left hamstring. Just missed. Aaron hesitated. I think he thought he had that one. May have had the corner. He'll have to settle for a pop. Shallow left. Each row is there. And he makes the catch. And then after that series in Washington, D.C., it's never easy on the West Coast. It's uh, out to California, four game series in San Francisco, and then three games in Los Angeles. Hamels up the middle. Sends one into center field for a two out hit. The Giants are playing Los Angeles. But not the Dodgers. And lead the Angels 4 1 in the sixth. You're getting a. A beauty. Tossed by. Tim Hudson. Six innings he's given up just one hit and one run. Giants at 10 and 13. Of course, that one hit and a run. Mike Trout home run. Dodgers at the top of that division at 14 and 8. And 11 and 2 at Dodger Stadium. 
the ball is absolute. Have you seen that game? They, they had Sam? four home runs the other night. I think they had three in the first inning. I'm telling the ball is absolutely flying. When Justin Turner goes out to right center at Dodger Stadium at night, their young uh, center fielder, Jock Peterson, hit a grand slam last night. Ben Scully's got the home run call down this year. He's yeah. been working on it for a while. I was about to say he had that down in 1951. <laughs> or whatever it was he started. Three in Washington, four in San Francisco, three in Los Angeles. Echeverria has it. Dan Heron is through five shutout innings. It's five nothing Miami. The U. The Marlins have a 5 0 lead, but University of Miami afternoon, a lot of Hurricane employees, alums are here. So we ought to tread opening day rosters. Which colleges have the most players in the big leagues? Got the West Coast well represented with the dirtbags of Long Beach State, Arizona State, North Carolina, and Stanford at seven. Nine schools, including Miami, bringing up the bottom of that list. Jeff Baker fouls it off. Count is 0 and 1. Jeff Baker, a Tiger, a Clemson Tiger. Yeah, we talked about the really solid job Jeff Baker did last year. 12 pinch hits, a 316 pinch hitting average, and nine RBIs coming off the uh, bench. Maybe get a chance to uh, see his dad, the Colonel Larry, in uh, Washington, D.C. That's right. Baker swings and misses. Hamill strikes him out. First out here in the fifth. JT Real Muto and then Ichiro also coming up halfway through. At Marlins Park. Marlins walked off with a win last night. Marcelo Zuna scoring Giancarlo Stanton in the bottom of the ninth. Marlins in this ball game haven't waited for the late innings. They had actually a 
great opportunity in the first. Didn't score. Martin Prado though. With two outs and two on in the second homer to left. Miami has added oh. single runs in the third and the fourth. That's one thing the Marlins have. Loaded up base runners in 13 and the third innings. In this series the Marlins have had 30 base runners all of a sudden Hamels. Back to back strikeouts. Four strikeouts, three walks for Hamels. About to throw his 83rd pitch in Ichiro's direction. Ichiro has singled and walked. And it looked comfortable against the lefty. Had a nice series up in Philly. The energy team, Tommy, playing each row not to pull. That was what was amazing the other night. Big home run he hit against Alex Torres. I mean, he fouled pitches off like that, and then all of a sudden turned on a fastball and hit the three run home. One and two. Little tapper and Hamels went up to get it. If he doesn't grab it on that hop, that's a base hit. As it is, it's a one, two, three inning. The first for Hamels today. It's the sixth here at Marlins Park. Whether it's a family celebration, network event, fundraiser for your organization, you can arrange for your next group outing at Marlins Park and just ask about all the new food and beverage options, which include VIP groups, all you can eat seats, new Clevelander Sunday brunch with the $5 mimosas, 1 877 Marlins, or go to marlins.com slash groups. Odubel Herrera against Dan Heron. Sixth inning. Herrera, Utley, Howard. Heron has been outstanding. Oh! 
Five innings, four hits, obviously no runs, no walks, four strikeouts. And that has always been something that Dan Heron has limited the walks. Last year, with the Dodgers, 186 innings, just 36 walks. We'll have to ask Dan Heron if the ball was jumping like that at Dodger Stadium last year. John Chimchuk, our baseball historian, has unearthed some home run numbers. Center field. And Ozuna's there to make the catch. 13 games at Dodger Stadium this season. There have been a total of 36 home runs. 22 by the Dodgers, 14 by the opponents. Wow. Well, the Marlins will get to test that out firsthand at the end of this upcoming road trip. Dodgers at home against Arizona tonight. Utley tops it over the middle. Etch got a beat on it, and a quick release is in time to get him. Is that an easy play? No, it's not. And Etch coming hard at it, kind of got the in between hop. He knows how hard Utley runs. So he had to come get it, gather it in, and complete it. Ryan Howard, who was 0 for 2, has bounced out, struck out. Making his fifth start of the year. Given the fact that he's had 30 or more starts 10 straight years, you figure he's just going to continue on. He's not had great success against the Phillies. 11 starts, just one win, a 4 6 4 ERA. Of course, you would guess the bulk of his starts against the Phillies in the Phillies' heyday when Rollins and Utley were up the middle and Howard was banging home runs. Maybe even when Hunter Pence was out there. High, high pop up each row towards the line, and he makes the catch. Dan Heron just keeps baffling the Phillies.
Martin Prado with a three run homer in support of Dan Heron. Danny Echeverria is up against Cole Hamels in the bottom of the sixth. And it looks like Heron is done for the day after six innings. He's due up second. Nick Massett is in Miami's bullpen. Donovan Solano is on deck. The chance that the Marlins and you at home may get to see Jonathan Solano behind the plate tomorrow on a Sunday game. JT Real Muto has been behind the week for what or behind the plate for a solid week and a half, two weeks. Etch lines it foul. Yeah, I think it's going to be a situation where Mike Redman is going to find spots to give him a breather. Three and two. Hot smash. Ashy gets the out. We check in with Craig Minervini. Well, it's a pleasure. We've been looking around for Tom Flash Gordon, and uh, he's had a chance to, to come down here and watch your son in Florida. How neat is that for him to be playing in your home state? It's a blessing. I tell you, we're, we're, we're really excited. He's getting this opportunity to play at home. I get a chance to watch him too as much as I can. You know, of course, he's always wanting me around, So, I, and I love that. You know how kids are. But, uh, you know, to watch him go out and play every night and compete at this game and at this level is amazing. You had a, an incredible career of longevity, of success, over 138 wins, you had over 150 saves, and your son is, a, you know, an infielder and a great speed, a different player than you were. Uh, yeah, you know, I always felt like I could be an infielder at some point, but you know what? Uh, you know, pitching suited me. Uh, I love the game. I love what I did. I love to get an opportunity being out there to go out there every day and play. But to watch them, to grow up, and they say that they want to play the game, to watch my son compete every day, like I said, and then when he's tried to make that transition to becoming a professional, man, it's just been a blessing for us. He's up now, so lean over so you can see him. And his his start is, has been unbelievable. I mean, can can anybody keep this pace up? Uh, you know what? I, look, we haven't seen a 400 here in a long time, no <gasps> doubt. You know, and I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but I do believe with his talent and skills and the way he plays the game, he understands his ability. And for young kids that's playing this game, that's the most important thing, to understand quickly as you can what you do very well. And he tries to just stay within that. Don't try to get outside of making things happen too big or do too much. But, you know, where he's really comfortable, he stays in that realm. And, I, and I'm really grateful for that. He's also been great with the post-game dunks, which I took one of the, uh, the hits on. And, you know, he said he loved basketball. But you want him to play baseball. He loves that, too. Well, no doubt. You know, I always love the game of basketball as well. You know, any sport that my kids plays, I was really grateful that they wanted to go out there and play a game that they love. Never pushed this game on them. So my brother and I, you know, uh, we thought about sitting down and we're saying, hey, look, son, you may not be the next six feet, 5'11 point guard that's a superstar in the NBA. So let's try baseball and let's give it a real shot. And I remember one particular night he called me and said, Dad, if you buy me this bat, I'll play. I promise you, I'll give it everything I got. And I said, you know what, son, I would do that if you give me your word. And he gave me his word, and this is where we've got. Wow. He certainly has. It's been fun to watch, and not only uh, offensively, but defensively, he's been outstanding. Yeah, you know what? He's always strived and tried to be the best defensively as he can. I think the transition to second base, you know, at one point was kind of tough for him because he knew that second base, he couldn't be as athletic as he wanted to be. Uh, but at shortstop, I think he was overplaying a little bit. He was trying to get a little bit too ahead of himself. And, you know, and as kids develop in this game, you know, playing every day and developing out there on the field, that's the key to it. Another hit. Another hit. You know, we're just grateful for that. You know, I get a chance to watch this. For me, playing in front of my parents, you know, I've always said, man, you know what? It's always great to play in front of your parents. Parents didn't get a chance to see me nearly as much. 
But he says, Dad, I love you being in the ballpark every single night. So for me, it's a dream come true. That's awesome. And last thing, Conine was one of your teammates. Hard to believe way back in your royal days, huh? A long time ago, isn't it so? But, yeah, one of my favorite teammates of all time. I love him, and we've had a really good relationship, and I love talking to him. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful that, like I said, I could be here and see him and see all the guys that I got a chance to play with. And also see my son playing against some of these guys. He's hitting 440 now. It's just been fun to watch. I know the Marlins were impressed with him last year when he came in with the Dodgers and did so well. And you have a big family contingent. They must enjoy having him in the Sunshine State. They do, man. He's maturing every single day. And uh, my, my mom's here. His grandmother, my brothers are here. Both of my brothers that really wanted to push him into this game, help him in every way that he needed to be helped. Uh, you know, it's just been, a, like I said, a dream for our family. And he's competed. He's competed. He made this a positive for himself. There he goes around the bases again. He's been exciting. Tom, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. You got it. Anytime. That's the great Tom Flash Gordon. Let's go back to you guys. Right, great to have him on during that at bat. Martin Prado has had quite a day. Drives that one in the gap. Knocks home Gordon for the second time. And the Marlins are roughing up Cole Hamels. Here in Miami. Boy, and once this ball found the gap, it was off to the races uh, on this Kentucky Derby Saturday. I guess off to the races for D. Gordon, watching him fly around the bases. He scored three times. That was his uh, seventh. He's been on base seven times. His seventh three-hit game for D. Gordon. And all you have to do is listen to his dad in that interview, and you know why D. is a quality young man the way he is. He sounded... It, Son sounds like father. Father looks like son. Did you see the baseball card there as well? Stanton swings and misses. That was a, a Tom Gordon Kansas City Royals card. Count one and one to Giancarlo. Sacrifice fly for Stanton. Prado's driven in four of Miami's six runs. Stanton fouls it off. Hamels is at 104 pitches. Phillies bullpen is ready. Well, he got a couple of quick outs and then that two out base hit by D. Gordon, driven home by Prado. Stanton swings and misses at a fastball. Hamill strikes him out. Miami strikes for another. Martin Prado's driven in four. Speaking of evenings, what a nice evening this is. Fish and Chips. Marlin players at the annual Fish and Chips Double or Nothing Casino Party on Thursday, May 21st at Marlins Park. Enjoy an evening of poker, blackjack, craps, dominoes, live music, hors d'oeuvres, silent auction. You can reserve a spot at marlins.com slash fish and chips. The, the fish that you saw in that shot will not... Well, they'll be there. They're actually invited guests, not as hors d'oeuvres either. 
Nick Masson for Miami. Grady Sizemore, Cody Ashi, Carlos Ruiz. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 and 1. Sizemore has doubled and struck out. Masson, guy that breathing new life into his career. Yeah, he is. He, he's got arm strength back. I remember talking to him in spring training about that. He had a nice run working out of the Cincinnati Reds bullpen. He had a three year stretch where he appeared in 74 or more games each of those years. Dan Jennings, Marlins vice president of baseball operations, always had his eye on a guy like Massett. Said Massett, in particular, when he was injured and started the road back on rehab, he stayed on Miami's radar. Oh. Not a lot of hits there for the Phillies, just four of them. Dan Heron didn't walk anybody in his six innings. Dustin McGowan made uh, and that start in Philadelphia in that series there. Massett born in St. Petersburg. And was drafted out of St. Petersburg Community College. Got to the big leagues in 2006 with the Rangers. White Sox the next two years. Then that run with the Reds. Gordon goes to get the two big hops. Flips on over to Baker. Sizemore is out number one. I loved it when Tom Gordon told Craig he said uh, his son told him D told him if you give me that bat I'll I'll, I'll buy in I'll, I'll play baseball. We got to find out if he still got that bat. Yeah. I mean kids I mean he was. What in his middle years in high school kids wear those bats out. You get an aluminum bat. And that's your bat until. Either it breaks. Or it gets a. A, a bend in it. Some guys use them so much that. Little indentations appear. Each row. And he makes the catch. You and I heard good news on Christian Yelich today. Saw him taking uh, batting practice. Certainly looked good taking BP. I would imagine a few rehab games would be in store and we could see him in San Francisco perhaps. That's kind of the timetable. They want to Yelich, I think the first rehab game is tomorrow. Get some at bats, play a couple games, make sure that the back is going to be sound and he won't be re injuring it. And then maybe San Francisco. And make sure it's ready for a coast to coast flight. And there you go. Stay hot. Oh. Massett had to work back from some significant surgeries. Torn capsule in his right shoulder, 2012. Ruiz up the middle, etch, slides, throws, safe. Nice play, Ruiz just beat it. And it'll be an infield hit. Tell you what, etch has had an almost a couple of spectaculars today. A little, little hitch as he tried to get it out, didn't have the right grip. If not, he gets Ruiz, but just another terrific attempt. Right about there. That comes up with a one hop perfect throw though. That was by intent.
Freddy Galvis flips one to left. Ichiro in pursuit. Has it. Nick Massett picks up where Dan Heron left off. Ichiro. Def highlights. What hasn't he done? Well, I tell you what, we're happy to be on that ride with him. Base hits, stolen bases, he's scoring runs. He Just is, an unbelievable run. He's 20 for his last 31 at the plate. He's got six consecutive hits now. Eight consecutive appearances reaching base. He's three for three in this game with two stolen bases, three runs scored. And a walk. And his dad's here and gave a terrific interview sitting down with Craig during his last at bat. This would be Dustin McGowan. Cole Hamill's day is over. Hamill's goes six into the seventh. Marcel Ozuna, one for three after a four for four night himself last night. Yeah, McGowan took the loss in the third game of that series up in Philadelphia. Went three and a third, gave up three hits and four runs. Ozuna pulls it foul. John Tui, two, ladies and gentlemen. Representing the Baylor Bears. One of Fox Sports Florida's finest camera folk. Pointing out to the kid he wants the uh, very nice Mr. Tui too. Here's the one two. Broken bat left field base hit. Ozuna stays hot. Here comes Jeff Baker, who has doubled in three trips. A lot of the action in baseball is later tonight. Baker with a seed out to Utley. His throw goes into the dugout. And Ozuna, I think, is going to go to third. When the ball goes out of play on a throw like that, it's one plus. So it's the base you were headed to and the next base. And since Ozuna had started back towards second when the ball went out of play,
think it may have actually hit a Philly coach. Yeah, standing uh, on the stairway there in the opening. What a shot by Baker. Unfortunately, Utley with the play, the throw behind Ozuna, so Howard didn't have a chance. Real Muto. Another good swing by Jeff Baker. And an RBI opportunity here for Real Muto. Struck out twice, RBI double, all those at bats against Cole Hamels. Choked up, he fouls it back. It's 0 2. Ten hits against Hamels, six runs. Real Muto, beautiful. Two strikes, choked up, punches it through the right side. His second RBI of the ball game. Go ahead, make contact, runner at third. He's just going to give me that pitch out over the plate. I'm going to take it the other way, and that's exactly what Real Muto did. Cutter off the plate, away. It was up. He stays on it and drills it past Howard. Chiro takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. 7 0 Miami. Oh. It's funny the, the question to Mike Redman at the end of spring trading is how are you going to get Ichiro? At bats, Redmond has <laughs> laughed about that over the last couple of weeks. Now it's almost like Ichiro may need a day off here. <laughs> it's 41. But he certainly is swinging it well right now. That one will be two. Galvis fires it over to first. And Miami is done. They add a run to the eighth. Seven nothing. Boy, it, the Marlins had opportunities in that first inning, couldn't cash in, but boy, did they cash in. Martin Prado, a three run shot in the second inning, and that put them up 3 nothing off of Cole Hamels. 
been some good hitting all around. After a double by Baker, JT Real Muto with a double in the corner. Gives the Marlins their fourth run. They pick up another, and guess who that guy is? Prado with a double into the gap. D. Gordon flying all the way around. D. Gordon's three for three. He's perfect today. Scored three times. Real Muto added another RBI base hit in the seventh inning. John Carlo, the only uh, hitter in the lineup without a hit, but Big G has a sack fly. He had that back in the fourth inning. So Nick Massett ventures into the eighth. Cesar Hernandez at the plate for the Phillies. Ichiro down to his knees finds it in the lights. One out. MLB.tv Premium is the number one live streaming sports service and it's celebrating 13 years. You can get every out of market regular season game live or on demand in true HD highlights, look ins, and of course the ever popular pitch tracking widget. MLB.tv Premium includes a free at bat 15 subscription. Watch at home, in the office, or on the go, but not in the car. Thanks. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. A road trip would not be complete without the pitch tracking widget. That's right. Which we pack carefully for each trip. Oh. Ben Revere's up. He has swung it well. Here's a look at Jonathan Papelbon, who's up and probably needs some work. Revere's lined out twice and singled. Swing and it kicks away from Real Muto and it trickles down into the Phillies dugout. Now the difference between that play and the one that in that last half inning that sent Ozuna from first all the way to the third is that was not a uh, ball in play as far as a thrown by the defender. It was a pitch. Boy, that's a good curveball. You see, it starts about at the letters, ends up down there, squibs away from Real Muto. There'll be a strikeout, a wild pitch, and Revere's at first base. Here's Herrera, who backs away from the plate and takes a strike. It looks good for a guy that had that capsule surgery in 2012, and then it's a surgery we've heard of a few times of pitchers having thoracic outlet syndrome with the circulatory problem and yeah, it cuts off the circulation kind of between the ribs and the collarbone. That was 2013. He had a, an infection in 2014. Herrera sends it into center field. Solid hit. Ozuna picks it up. And Revere holds at second. There's one out. Chase Utley coming up. Man, it, <laughs> the Marlins are, are certainly the just red hot right now. If they win this game, they'll won nine of the last ten. The other really hot team in the National League, the St. Louis Cardinals. And they win in walk-off fashion again against the Pirates in 11. Wow. How about the Astros? They've won eight straight. Yeah. <laughs> they play later tonight. That's right. Matt Carpenter, a sacrifice fly for the walk-off run. <laughs> Astros are winning a lot of one-run games. Revere at second. Herrera, the runner at first. Milwaukee blasted the Cubs six to one. Mike Fires' first win of the season. Gene Segura is back. He was four for five, knocked in a couple for the Brewers. Roller up the middle, Gordon flip, Echeverria turn, nicely done. 
Massett rolls a double play. And the Phillies eighth ends abruptly. Evening in Miami. Great contingent from the University of Miami. Fans out in Cleveland are all fired up. Jonathan Papelbon is in. And Papelbon will work the bottom of the eighth inning. Danny Echevarria, Justin Bohr will get a pinch hitting appearance. And then D. Gordon. They see Papelbon five for five and save opportunities. Cesar Hernandez, who pinch hit, stays in the game. He's at second base. So Papelbon will hit in Utley's spot in the lineup. Echeverria lines it to right. Oh, it bounced. Wasn't caught. Edge doesn't stop. Sizemore's throw. He's in there. Sizemore making the dive to his credit. Kept it in front of him. I don't know what it hit. And Echeverria never slowed down. That was the best part about it is that Echeverria had that play in front of him. Stings this ball. It's sinking hard. And he's going hard. And let's see if we can see where this ball eh, it just sits on the glove. So a good play by Sizemore to keep it down, but even a better play by Echeverria. He just turned it on, not hesitate, saw the ball trickle away and ends up at second with a double. Justin Bohr. Bohr pulls a ground ball. To the right side, Hernandez on to first. And there's one out here in the eighth, and here comes D. Gordon. Bohr, sometimes you don't want to empty your cannons when the guy steps into the box, but Bohr with just one swing, he's had just an amazing start to the season. That's the first time he's made an out as a pinch hitter. And his pinch hit last night was down the third base line. Infield's in. D. Gordon, three for three with a walk. Papelbon misses up. He swiped a pair of bases. He has scored three runs. He's hit an eight straight. And is 20 for his last 31. Two and oh. And 
and that's out as well and it's three and no. Prado's on deck. Amidst the struggles by the Phillies Papelbon has been really good. Moves in a fastball. Sam Dyson in Miami's pen. And Gordon walks. This was a tight ball game early. The Marlins had an opportunity in the first. They didn't cash in. And this for Warren Henry. Drive of the game was a big one. Got Miami on the board. A three run shot by Martin Prado. He took a, a quick little pause just to, to watch because he knew he hit that ball well. And then respectfully put his head down and circled the bases. Gordon's at first. The Phillies will play behind him. And Prado gets hit. Papelbon hits Prado in the left leg. Prado gets up. Takes off that arm guard that he's got. And is on his way down to first base. Yeah, it almost just looks like a pitch. He totally gets away from Papelbon. He's in there to get some work, and now he has to face Giancarlo Stanton with the bases loaded. So the bags are juiced. Here's Stanton. Breaking balls out. Okay, you don't expect that Papelbon hit Prado so he could face Stanton with the bases loaded. No you don't. Fastball. And Stanton fouls it back. Ball in a strike. One and two. He challenged him with a fastball, and it stays at one and two. Of course, Papelbon, the other guy that we're talking about Cole Hamels as being a, a trade chip, and he has been for some time. The Phillies didn't find the proper suitor. Training deadline last year, end of last year, spring training this year. Applebaum, to his credit, has continued to be an effective closer. It's five of five in save opportunities. Obviously, it's a long way from one of those. He's just trying to get some work right now. And he's run the count to two and two on Stanton. Bags loaded, one out. Seven nothing, Miami. Stanton a piece of the ball held by Ruiz and a strikeout by Jonathan Papelbon. The third time that John Carlos gone down this afternoon and that's been the not that it's a beauty for him but the beauty of this ball club. Everybody else has picked him up today. He does have the sack fly but those around him have really produced.
Ozuna swings and misses. Is out of play. Base is loaded. Miami four for 24 today, 0 for 3. You know, Ozuna doesn't have a homer. He's driven in five. He hasn't had a lot of at bats with runners in scoring position. On the year, this is just his 11th. He's three for ten in those spots. Well, it got through Ruiz and got a piece of Manny Gonzalez, the home plate umpire, who will walk it off. Series concludes tomorrow. Fox Sports Florida at 12:30. Marlins Live, brought to you by your South Florida Honda dealers. Jared Cozart going for Miami, and Severino Gonzalez, 24-year-old Panamanian. O2. Ozuna lifts it in the air to right center field. Herrera makes the catch. Marlins load him up and leave him loaded. Still lead it 7 0. By Kubota. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to FloridaCubotaDealers.com. Seven nothing. Thirteen hits for Miami. Phillies without a run and six hits. And tomorrow the series concludes. South Florida Honda dealers. We'll get you going at 12:30. Inside the Marlins preview, a Tyler Kolick update, and obviously a lot of highlights and a recap, not only of this series but of this homestand. If Miami wins this game, they will have won nine of their last ten. It'll stretch a win streak to four in a row, and it will put the ball club amazingly at 500. On an afternoon where 33,348 the attendance and they have certainly been entertained. Reed Brignac comes in to play third with Dyson coming into pitch. 
Brian Howard fouls one off. Nick Massett a couple of scoreless innings in relief gave up a couple of hits Dan Heron in line for the win. Six shutout innings four hits four strikeouts. It misses away. Oh, excuse me. Dyson misses away. Sam in here trying to finish in the ninth and deliver it to Jared Cozart for his start tomorrow against the Phillies. The Marlins trying to put themselves in position for their second sweep of the homestand. The Nationals went down in three. Marlins took two of three from the first place Mets. And a win here. Official have won the first two of this three game series. Hey, just want to keep uh, putting yourself in that position. Dyson with a really nice change up that dies low and away. Howard went after it and he strikes out. Boy, that's really a good pitch for Dyson because he has that, that heavy sinker that's mid to upper 90s and then can throw that pitch and you see how badly he fools Howard with it. Sizemore up there for the fourth time. He's got a double. Mike Redmond giving Jeff Baker a start at first base. That paid off. Baker with the double and scored a, a run in the third. Came home on JT Real Muto's double. Oh. Lineup tomorrow will be interesting to see on Sunday. Possibly Jonathan Solano gets a start behind the plate with the righty on the mound. For the Phils. Dyson, another nasty changeup. Sizemore misses that. Two strikeouts. Cody Ashey comes up. Dive bomber. Strike it, it's two and one. Other teams in the National League East tonight. Nationals still in New York to face the Mets. Gio Gonzalez against Jonathan Nice in that matchup. And the Braves play host to the Reds. And this big crowd. Who has had a great time at the ballpark? Watch the Marlins get an early lead and just add on as they went. 2 2 coming, and it's out. Three two. 
ball game, and the Marlins beat the Phillies. Hello, 500.